What really happened to Emmy Lou Harris? Emmy Lou Harris was born on April 2, 1947. Harris is from a career military family. Her father, Walter Harris, was a Marine Corps officer, and her mother, Eugenia, was a wartime military wife. Her father was reported missing in action in Korea in 1952 and spent 10 months as a prisoner of war. Born in Birmingham, Alabama, Harris spent her childhood in North Carolina and Woodbridge, Virginia, where she graduated from Garfield Senior High School as class valedictorian. She won a drama scholarship to the UNCG School of Music, Theater and Dance at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, where she began to study music, and learn the songs of Pete Seeger, Bob Dylan, and Joan Baez on guitar. She dropped out of college to pursue her musical aspirations, and moved to New York City, working as a waitress to support herself while performing folk songs in Greenwich Village coffeehouses during the 1960s folk music boom. She married fellow songwriter Tom Slocum in 1969 and recorded her first album, Gliding Bird. Harris and Slocum soon divorced, and Harris and her newborn daughter Hallie moved in with her parents in Clarksville, Maryland, a suburb near Washington, D.C. Harris has been married three times. Her marriage to Tom Slocum lasted from 1969 to 1970 and produced one child, Mika Halley Slocum, born on March 15, 1970. From 1977 to 1984 she was married to Brian Ahern, with whom she had one child, Megan Ahern, born on September 9, 1979. From 1985 to 1993, she was married to Paul Kennerly. Harris soon returned to performing as part of a trio with Jerry Mule and Tom Guidera. In 1971, members of the country rock group The Flying Burrito Brothers saw her perform. Former Birds member Chris Hillman had taken over the band and was impressed by Harris, and briefly considered asking her to join The Flying Burrito Brothers. Instead, Hillman recommended her to Graham Parsons, who was looking for a female vocalist to collaborate with on his first solo album, G.P. Harris toured as a member of Parsons' band, The Fallen Angels, in 1973, and the pair shone during vocal harmonies and duets. Later that year, Parsons and Harris worked on a studio album, Grievous Angel. Parsons died in his motel room near what is now Joshua Tree National Park on September 19, 1973, from an accidental overdose of drugs and alcohol. Parsons' Grievous Angel was released posthumously in 1974, and three more tracks from his sessions with Harris were included on another posthumous Parsons album, Sleepless Nights, in 1976. One more album of recorded material from that period was packaged as Live 1973 but was not released until 1982. Warner Brothers A&R representative Mary Martin introduced Harris to Canadian producer Brian Ahern, who produced her major label debut album, Pieces of the Sky, released in 1975 on Reprise Records. The album was surprisingly eclectic, especially by Nashville standards including cover versions of The Beatles for No One, Merle Haggard's Tonight the Bottle Let Me Down and the Leuven Brothers' If I Could Only Win Your Love. It also featured Bluebird Wine, a composition by a young Texas songwriter, Rodney Crowell, who was the first in a long line of songwriters whose talents Harris has championed. The record was one of the most expensive country records produced at the time, featuring the talents of James Burton, Glenn Hardin, Ron Tutt, Ray Pullman, and Bill Payne, as well as two tracks that were cut with the Angel Band. Two singles were released, Too Far Gone, which initially charted at number 73, and Harris' first big hit, If I Could Only Win Your Love, a duet with Herb Peterson, which peaked at number 4. Unusual for country albums at the time, which largely revolved around a hit single, Harris albums borrowed their approach from the album-oriented rock market. Elite Hotel was a number one country album and also did sufficiently well as a crossover success with the rock audience. 
Harris appealed to those who normally disapproved of the country market's pull toward crossover pop singles. Elite Hotel won a Grammy in 1976 for Best Country Vocal Performance, Female. Harris' reputation for guest work continued. She contributed to albums by Linda Ronstadt, Guy Clark, and Neil Young, and she was tapped by Bob Dylan to perform on his Desire album. Harris also filmed one of the studio sequences, owing to her touring schedule, in the band's The Last Waltz, singing Evangeline. During this period, Harris recorded and released three studio albums that reflected a shift toward the traditional country. The Roots direction was prominent in her Grammy Award-winning 1979 album Blue Kentucky Girl. Apart from a cover of The Drifters' Save the Last Dance for Me, the album was largely made up of classic-styled country material in the vein of Loretta Lynn and Kitty Wells. One of her best-loved albums, it includes songs from the Leuven Brothers' Every Time You Leave, Willie Nelson's Sisters Coming Home and Graham Parsons' signature Hickory Wind. Wesley Rose took a special interest in Harris' recording of Beneath Still Waters, which became a number one hit. The Christmas album Light of the Stable was released in 1979. Its title track featured backing vocals by Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, and Neil Young, all of whom Harris had worked with sporadically since the mid-1970s, and with whom she continued to collaborate through the 2000s. In the 1980s, Harris explored country music's history further with the bluegrass-oriented recording of Roses in the Snow, featuring Ricky Skaggs, Tony Rice, Albert Lee, Emery Gordy Jr., and Jerry Douglas. Harris' versions of the traditional Wayfaring Stranger and Paul Simon's The Boxer were strong singles. In 1980, Harris recorded That Lovin' You Feelin' Again with Roy Orbison. The duet's recording was a top 10 hit on both the country and adult contemporary charts. They were awarded a Grammy for Best Country Vocal Performance by a duo or group. She was featured on Paul Kennerly's concept album The Legend of Jesse James, which also featured Lee Von Helm of the band and Johnny Cash. In 1981, Harris recordings reached the top 40 on the Billboard Pop Chart with a cover of Mr. Sandman again top 10 country as well as adult contemporary, from her Evangeline album. She also released her follow-up album, Cimarron, within the same year. Harris moved to Nashville in 1982. White Shoes in 1983 included an eclectic pairing of the rockish reading of Diamonds or a Girl's Best Friend with a remake of the Donna Summer hit on the radio, as well as tracks from a diverse group of songwriters including hot band member Kroll, Sandy Denny, and T-Bone Burnett. It was her last album produced by Brian Ahern until All I Intended to Be in 2008. Harris' major label releases thus far included few of her own songs, but in 1985 her songwriting skills were prominent with the release of a concept album The Ballad of Sally Rose, for which she co-wrote all of the songs. The album was semi-autobiographical, based loosely on her relationship with Parsons. Harris described it as a country opera, and a huge commercial disaster. Her co-writer and producer on the album, English songwriter and musician Paul Kennerly, the writer of the hit singles Born to Run and In My Dreams. Kennerly also produced her next album, 13. They married in 1985 and divorced in 1993. In 1987, Nearly a full decade after their first attempt, Harris teamed up with Dolly Parton and Linda Ronstadt for a long-promised and long-anticipated trio disc. The album was the biggest commercial success of Harris' career, spending five weeks at number one on Billboard's Country Albums chart also quickly reaching the top ten on the Pop Albums chart. It sold several million copies and produced four top ten country hits, including To Know Him As To Love Him, which hit number one. The recording was nominated for the coveted album of the year Grammy Award and the three women won the statuette for best country vocal performance by a duo or group with vocal. The album's Linda Thompson penned track Telling Me Lies reached number three country, number 25 adult contemporary, 
and was nominated for a Grammy as 1987's Best Country Song. Harris also released a solo album in 1987, Angel Band, featuring traditional gospel songs, on which she worked with then-rising country star Vince Gill, and others. In 1989, she recorded two songs with the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band on their album, Will the Circle is Unbroken, Volume 2. 1989's Bluebird album, which featured contributions from Marty Stewart, Bonnie Raitt, and Kate and Anna McGarrigal, included the singles Heartbreak Hill, which reached number 8 on the U.S. Country Singles Chart, and Heaven Only Knows, which reached number 16, the most recent top 20 chart singles of Harris' career. The following year's brand new dance album received favorable reviews but marked the beginning of a chart and airplay decline for Harris. Around 1991, she dissolved the hot band and formed a new band of acoustic musicians, Sam Bush on fiddle, mandolin and vocals, Roy Husky Jr. on bass and vocals, Larry Adamanick on drums, Al Perkins on banjo, guitar, dobro guitar and vocals, and John Randall on guitar, mandolin and vocals, which she named the Nash Ramblers. They recorded a Grammy Award-winning live album in 1992 at the Ryman Auditorium in Nashville, Tennessee, which led to the $8 million restorations of the facility into a premium concert and event venue. It was her last album with Reprise Records. She has been a member of the Grand Ole Opry since 1992. During the summer of 1997 and 1998, Harris joined Sarah McLaughlin's all-woman musical touring festival, the Lilith Fair, where new artists like Patty Griffin could share new experiences and ideas with seasoned musicians like Harris and Bonnie Raitt. In January 1999, Harris released Trio 2 with Parton and Ronstadt. Much of the album had actually been recorded in 1994 but remained unreleased for nearly five years because of the record label and personnel disputes, conflicting schedules, and career priorities of the three artists. Trio 2 was much more contemporary sounding than its predecessor and was certified gold. It included their version of Neil Young's classic After the Gold Rush, which became a popular music video and won another Grammy, this one for Best Country Collaboration with Vocals. Harris and Ronstadt then released a duet album, Western Wall, The Tucson Sessions, later the same year. The two superstars toured together that fall in support of the disc. Both albums made the top 10 of Billboard's Country Albums chart and also did well on the pop chart. In 2000, Harris released her solo follow-up to Wrecking Ball, Red Dirt Girl, produced by Lanois protégé Malcolm Byrne. For the first time since The Ballad of Sally Rose, the album contained a number of Harris' own compositions. Like Wrecking Ball, the album's sound leaned more toward alternative rock than country. Nevertheless, it reached number 5 on Billboard's Country Albums chart as well as a healthy number 54 on the pop side. It also won Harris another of her 13 Grammy Awards, in the category of Best Contemporary Folk Album. A solo album, All I Intended to Be, was released on June 10, 2008, to critical acclaim. It reached the top 5 of Billboard's Country Albums chart and the top 20 on the Pop Albums chart. It did not include Miller, who was touring with Robert Plant, Alison Krauss, and T-Bone Burnett at the time. In 2009, Harris toured with Patty Griffin, Sean Colvin, and Miller as three girls and their buddy. A recent solo album, Hard Bargain, was released on the Nonesuch label on April 26, 2011. It reached number three on Billboard's Country Albums chart, her highest charting album since 1980, and the top 20 of the pop albums chart. Old Yellow Moon, an album of duets featuring Harris and former hot band member Rodney Crowell, was released on February 26, 2013. It was another Billboard Top 10 Country album for Harris, and in 2014 she won her 13th Grammy Award for it. The Traveling Kind, a collaboration with Rodney Crowell, was released May 12, 2015, 
by Nunsuch Records which earned the pair a second Americana Music Award for Duo Group of the Year and also garnered two Grammy nominations. In 2016, Harris was honored with a tribute concert entitled The Life and Songs of Emmy Lou Harris, which was later released as both a DVD and a live CD. That is what in the past but in the present is nostalgia. I love country music, and I love people who like country music just like me.